<coughs> Hello, friends. It's me yet again. So, here's the latest project. Um, yeah. It's the same thing as before. Uh, just uh, a little bigger, kind of. Um, I decided to use um, sort of like copper foil for this one. And the bearings are smaller. Um, yeah, like if you look at the um, the older one, uh, you know, it had larger bearings and uh, thicker uh, copper sheet. And I don't know, I just thought that it would work better with um, smaller bearings, like uh, less resistance. And um, yeah, and uh, the reason I used this um, aluminum uh, angle uh, was because the um, the previous uh, model I built um, the uh, the center shaft um, the glue on it melted like if you look at this one it's uh, the center shaft is just glued to the magnet so if you're running if you're running electricity through the uh, central sa or shaft. Uh, you know, the thing gets uh, so hot that um, the glue melts and then uh, what happened was my magnet uh, fell off and the discs uh, were um, damaged and they, they fell off too. So with this one here, um, the magnet is uh, supported um, by the aluminum angle and uh, the shaft, the central shaft here doesn't actually touch the uh, the magnet like there's um, a hole in the magnet and there's no uh, there's no touching so when the thing heats up um, there's no uh, like nothing will melt except maybe this glue up here but hopefully that's far enough away that it won't get hot enough to melt um, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna like attach the magnet to the to the shaft um, in my next version uh, using metal. I figured out how to do that instead of making this kind of um, exoskeleton kind of thing, which took uh, took a while to build. And you know, there's an easier way. Yeah, and uh, the bottom disc here uh, doesn't really turn in this version because it's further away from the magnet than the top disc is. And um, I just decided uh, to forget about it. You know, I just jammed the um, wire down on it, so it doesn't turn, but uh, in the next version it will turn. Yeah. <coughs> So, um, I will show it operating. Um, the interesting thing is that it um, spins very fast, the top disc. And, uh, what I'm going to do is show you, or at least try to show you how fast it goes okay now the um, the thing is upside down so the numbers might be kinda hard to uh, read okay so I'm just gonna hook it right to the frame bypass the bottom disc there we go yes okay so RPM over 5,000, over 6,000 now.
approaching the 7,000. Seven thousand five hundred. Crap. Come on. It's almost at eight thousand, but it went slow down. Then. Almost seven thousand nine hundred. I see I'm pushing up too hard on the wire. There we go, 8,000. 8,500. Hmm. I'm gonna move it a little. Seems to be a sweet spot where the wire Okay, well, that's good enough for now. <sighs> so as you can see, it works really well. <laughs> Um, almost 10,000 RPM I can get with this, and that's only um, that's only using like a quarter of all of my uh, nine volts. If I use all of them, I bet you it could go like 20,000 RPM. That might be my next video, and. Uh, you know, the interesting thing is that, well, the interesting stuff starts to happen at uh, about 10,000 RPM. Probably even a little more, maybe maybe around 20,000 RPM uh, is when things start to happen. Like, significant um, anti-gravity becomes uh, apparent, and uh, there's a certain um, self-sustaining quality that emerges and the thing almost becomes like a free energy device and um, there's also I guess uh, time distortions which begin to become apparent probably at um, maybe 30,000 RPM and maybe even more so thank you for watching I'll see you again next time Goodbye.